Hey there, everyone. Are you thinking of adding a duck pond to your hobby farm or homestead? Or maybe you already have something the ducks are using, but are looking for ideas to improve upon your setup. Or maybe, like me, you learned the hard way that adding a few ducks to that koi pond or backyard water garden didn't turn out quite like we had it hoped. You see, in addition to being awesome, ducks are messy and destructive, and they can wreak havoc on an average backyard water feature. So today, we've got five mistakes to avoid when planning for and building a backyard duck pond. We're the Hobby Farm Guys. I'm Brian. That's Steve. And the head cracker himself, Eric, is running things behind the camera today. Let's get started. Few scenes capture the essence of living the hobby farm life, like a few happy ducks paddling around a pond living their best duck life. We imagine the fresh morning air filled with the sounds of splashing and happy quacks as Mama Duck leads her little ducklings out of the sedges and into the clear, sparkling pond for their first swim. But the reality is, within a month or two, many look out and see a murky swamp, devoid of vegetation and surrounded by a slimy combination of mud, poop, and broken dreams. All while holding their nose to combat the ever-growing stench emanating from the area. Ducks, and for that matter geese and other waterfowl, can be hard on backyard ponds. It is possible to have option A, the mama and her ducklings on clear water, rather than option B, the muddy mess. But it takes some planning. Yes, it does. We're both currently in the process of planning and constructing duck ponds for our hobby farms. Brian, I know you're a lot further along in that process than I am. You already have your pond structure built and are just uh, finishing up some landscape and filtration, right? Yeah, but it's taken time, some money, and a whole lot of research to get to this point. I've heard you tell your stories about adding ducks to ponds that weren't designed for ducks, and I'm hoping to avoid that mistake. Right. So today, for those of you contemplating a duck pond, we've got the top five mistakes to avoid. And we'll start our list with a big one. Mistake number one is not sizing your pond correctly for the number of ducks you plan to keep. If you're considering a duck pond, step 1A is to plan your stocking level. In other words, how many ducks do you plan on having? A pond for two to three ducks is a much different project than a pond for 10 to 12 ducks. And yes, you can set out a kiddie pool or stock water and the ducks will happily swim in it. But if you want a pond that will look like a pond and not simply a murky tub of duck crap, plan on a minimum of six to nine square feet of water surface for each duck. So for three ducks, that's a bare minimum of 18 square feet. A dozen ducks will require nearly 100 square feet of pond. Many experts recommend allowing up to 20 square feet per bird. So double to triple the numbers we just discussed. When it comes to ducks and ponds, bigger is better. Plus, it's a lot easier to do it up front. Don't lie to yourself and say, oh, I'll be okay with four ducks when you know you want eight. And don't fall victim to the whole, I can squeeze one or two more ducks in there without it having a huge impact. Trust me on this one, every duck you add will have an impact. So determining how many ducks you want and what size pond you'll need is step one. Skipping this step and building a pond that's too small for the number of ducks it's meant to support is going to result in frustration, wasted time, wasted money, and mucky, smelly swamps. The second mistake to avoid is not putting thought into the location and design of the pond and considering if it will be a seasonal or year-round pond. Again, you can dig a hole, fill it with water, and the ducks will swim on it, but it might not be meeting all their needs. And if not properly designed and placed, that cool new duck pond just might cause you extra work all year long. To start with, what will you use to build the pond? Preformed fiberglass and plastic liners are available, but most of these are smaller and won't readily support a population of ducks. In the U.S., the three primary options people will select are EPDM rubber liners, PVC liners, and bentonite clay. Each comes with pros and cons. EPDM rubber is durable, flexible, UV resistant, and handles temperature fluctuations well, but it's typically pricier. PVC liners are relatively affordable and available, and they're also UV resistant, but they're less flexible than rubber liners, and they can crack in extreme cold. And bentonite clay is a natural, eco-friendly option that can self-seal small leaks and is safe for aquatic life, 
but it requires specific soil conditions to work and can be tricky and require specialized equipment to get it installed properly. The location of your pond will also need to be considered. Ducks do well with a mixture of sun and shade, so having both is ideal. Ponds in full sun all day are more prone to algae production. Be aware of low-lying areas and places that can flood and turn into a mess. Also keep in mind predators and their habits. Of course, you should also consider locating your pond somewhere convenient for you as well where you could enjoy it. Also, you'll want to provide varying depths within the pool to cater to ducks' needs for both swimming and foraging. A depth of at least two to three feet is typically sufficient, though deeper ponds are better at maintaining temperatures all year round. Another benefit of shallow areas, keeping your ducks safe. Male ducks are known to be extremely amorous and can easily drown a female duck during their attempts to woo her. It happens more often than you might care to believe. Having some shallow areas available can help keep everyone safe when the ducks are feeling a little frisky. And don't forget to provide a beach. A gradual sloping edge is ideal to allow for easy entrance and exit from the pond. A shallow shelf of six to eight inches can provide a safe space for foraging and other important habitat for other pond creatures and plants. And you'll need to determine if your pond will be accessible year round or seasonally. Depending upon your location and pond setup, you may want to winterize your pond and close it over the winter. Alternatively, a pond de-icer or heater can be used to keep a small area of the water surface ice-free, allowing for gas exchange. Mistake number three to avoid is failing to prepare for handling the copious amounts of poop and muck the ducks are going to generate. One of the biggest impacts in and around the pond is the poop from the ducks. It can become quite a mess and result in quite an odor. In conjunction with proper stocking density, which we've already discussed, your three allies in keeping the water clear, the odor down, and the pond healthy are water movement, aeration, and filtration. Many times people put in a pond and then drop a pond filter or fountain from a big box store in the middle of it, thinking they're all done. Yeah, guilty as charged. As someone who's tried that route, let me go ahead and just spoil the ending for you. Backyard ornamental or koi pond water filter systems were not designed to handle the level of waste production you're going to get with ducks in the pond. They will quickly become clogged and overloaded. Installing submerged water jets to get the water moving is the first step to keeping the pond clear. Without circulation, natural biological processes become imbalanced and no longer function properly. Calm water also attracts and provides nesting areas for mosquitoes. Lack of water movement allows the pond to stratify into layers based upon temperature and density. Decomposition processes slow, oxygen is lost, anaerobic bacteria bloom and dangerous chemical properties begin to form. Submerged jets circulate the water, preventing stratification and breaking up waste into smaller particles. Another tool to get water moving is to create a waterfall. In addition to looking good and moving water, a waterfall can also help with the aeration. Aeration helps maintain oxygen levels in the water, thereby promoting a healthy pond ecosystem and preventing stagnant water. Adding a fountain and some air stones to the bottom of your pond is another method for aerating water and preventing stratification. In addition to bringing cool, low oxygen water up from the bottom of the pond to the surface where it can replenish its oxygen levels, the bubbling action also further breaks up duck waste into smaller, manageable sizes that your main filter system can then process more efficiently. If you're serious about having a clear duck pond and ducks, we also recommend utilizing a skimmer or skimming stone to constantly sweep the surface of the pond clean, removing leaves and other debris before they sink and decompose at the bottom of the pond. Skimming also does a tremendous job of oxygenating and degassing your water so you don't have a smelly pond. The actual biofiltration of the pond can be tackled with a manufactured mechanical filter or a bog filter. Here again, each will come with some pros and cons. Having experienced firsthand the limitations of mechanical filters in the past, I'm a big fan of the bog filter because of its incredible capacity to strip water of debris and excess nutrients, resulting in clean, clear water. When properly built, bog filters will also involve less maintenance than mechanical filters and also can be an aesthetically pleasing component of the overall pond design. But to work, they need to be the proper size in relation to the pond Use the correct filter medium, utilize the right plants, and move water at an appropriate rate. 
which means they'll also increase the footprint of your duck pond because now you'll not need to only plan for pond space, but bog filter space as well. If you have a limited amount of space, that can be challenging, which is why some offer options other than a bog or wetland filter. You can still get the benefits of biofiltration without the space requirements of a bog by using a biofilter. Once set up and established, this is a rather low maintenance filter that effectively breaks down organic waste and converts harmful ammonia into less harmful substances. This type of filtration relies on beneficial bacteria, but rather than forming colonies in a wetland, they grow in a tank or barrel on media you supply, such as sponges or lava rock. Water is circulated through it and the bacteria are allowed to clean up the water. In addition to bogs and biofiltration, you also have mechanical filtration. These filters physically remove debris and particles from the water, preventing them from clouding the pond. Mechanical filtration systems typically use foam pads, filter brushes, or screens to trap solid particles. These need to be cleaned and replaced regularly. Also, while they filter out physical particles, they aren't as effective at removing excess nutrients and chemical compounds from the water as biofilters and bogs are. Another option is an ultraviolet sterilizer. These use UV light to kill algae and harmful microorganisms in the water. As they don't remove contaminants from the water, these are typically used in conjunction with biological and mechanical filters rather than as a standalone option. And the fourth mistake to avoid is similar to the third, where the third mistake was to fail to plan for the mess ducks make out of their copious amounts of poop. The fourth mistake is to not plan and prepare for the destruction ducks can and will cause just doing duck things. Ducks have appetites. Appetites for fish and other aquatic wildlife you perhaps wanted in your pond. Appetites for aquatic and marginal plants that you are counting on helping out with biofiltration and aesthetics. Appetites for adventure and social interaction. Without proper preparation, these appetites can quickly lay waste to your new duck pond. So let's talk about how to prevent that from happening. Ducks enjoy plants, whether as a food source or as entertainment if they get bored. Ducks can quickly destroy the water garden that you invested so much time and money on. Lilies will be shredded, submerged plants uprooted, potted plants knocked over, and marginal plants trampled. Recognize this fact up front. Then, create some areas such as maybe your bog filter in an area ducks can't gain access to. Fencing individual plants is another option. They may prune off parts that grow outside the cage, but the plant itself is safe from being destroyed. Also, look for plants that tend to be duck resistant. Highly scented, spiny, or thorny plants typically work well. Look for deer-resistant plants. The same things that make deer avoid plants typically work for waterfowl as well. And it's not only plants. Small fish and invertebrates can become a protein source for your backyard ducks. If you're wanting to incorporate fish, frogs, snails, crawdads, and other aquatic creatures into your pond, you need to do two things. First is realize that the ducks are going to get some. Welcome to Mother Nature. The second thing to do to prevent the ducks from getting all of them are to create and incorporate safety zones for these other critters. Utilizing a variety of sizes of rocks at the bottom of your pond, including large ones, can provide snails and worms places to hide where the ducks simply can't forage through the gravel and pick them out. Pockets that are fenced off or inaccessible to the ducks can provide refuge for other creatures trying to make the pond their home. Maybe include a small pond habitat at the top of your waterfall that's covered or fenced off from the ducks. Such an area allows snails and frogs to have a safe place to reproduce, helping them maintain their numbers, even as the ducks eat some of them that migrate down to the big pond. Also, while ducks readily gobble up small fish, stocking a few larger fish gives you the benefit of fish, but the ducks aren't able to gobble them up. Again, Given refuge where they can hide, many fish will learn to adapt to having ducks in the pond, but understand again that you're going to lose some, Mother Nature. In addition to eating the plants and other wildlife, ducks could be hard on the area around the pond. Well, an aspect of this reaches back to our early discussion on stocking density and not putting too many ducks in too small of a space, there are other factors to consider as well. Right, for example, high traffic areas. Maybe you have a large, beautiful pond with a winding shoreline and variable depth, but being clever, you also incorporated a beach along one section that gradually slopes into the pond, and it works. This is the preferred entry and exit for all your ducks. Guess what? That area is going to be a muddy, mucky mess. So when preparing uh, for the damage ducks do, 
think about things like this and maybe build a shoreline out of gravel or coarse sand to try and cut down on the mess. Other considerations are nesting areas if that's something you want to include. And board ducks are destructive ducks. Provide stimulation for your ducks and areas that they can explore. Floating logs can be an exciting adventure and a place to bask in the sun. Sunken or partially submerged logs can create underwater structures for the ducks to explore and hunt it. A small island built along the edge of the pond gives ducks an area to rest, preen, and nest. You may be surprised at how much time your ducks spend in these little areas. If your pond is large enough, you can include a floating island in the middle of the pond as well. Additionally, access to pasture or grass near the pond gives the ducks an alternative activity to do during the day. And the fifth mistake to avoid when building your duck pond is to not take into account future ongoing maintenance needs. In many ways, this decision is intertwined with the other topics we've talked about. The size and depth of your pond, its design, your choice for filtration will all greatly influence what type of ongoing maintenance is going to be required. This is likely the biggest complaint people with duck ponds have. Cleaning out filters, replacing fish and plants, removing decaying material from the bottom of the pond. These are all potential future chores associated with having a duck pond. By thinking about and planning your duck pond, you can simplify or even remove many ongoing maintenance chores. But there will always be some things to do. Yeah, you need to accept the fact that no matter how well you're set up, a duck pond requires a higher level of maintenance than a koi pond or water garden would. Regular cleaning and debris removal are essential to maintain water quality and a visually appealing pond. An annual cleaning of the pond bottom will help keep the pond clear and free of sludge. If you've stocked your pond appropriately and have effective filtration and a skimmer operating, well, you may be able to go longer between cleanings of the pond bottom. Periodically test the water quality parameters such as pH, ammonia, nitrites, and nitrates. Adjust your filtration system or water management practices as needed to maintain optimal water conditions for your ducks. The ideal pH range for most duck ponds is between 6.5 and 8.5. Additionally, maintaining temperatures within acceptable range can help with controlling excess algae and weed growth. Ducks, while well, they're generally comfortable in water between 30 and 75 degrees Fahrenheit, depending upon the species. But while there are algae that grow in cold water, generally, as your pond water temperature increases, so too does your level of algae. Algae and aquatic weeds can become a nuisance in duck ponds if left unchecked. Using biofilters, especially a bog filter, helps remove nutrients from the pond water that would otherwise support algal growth. Also, several fish species such as koi and goldfish are known to help control algae by eating it. And as mentioned earlier, UV clarifiers can help control algae by killing free-floating algae cells. Of course, water movement and aeration help oxygenate the water and limit the growth of algae as well. So investing more up front into a robust filtration system and ensuring plenty of movement and aeration can save you on maintenance chores later on. You'll need to ensure your filtration system is clean and operating effectively. Bog filters require some time to get established, but relatively little ongoing maintenance. Mechanical filters usually require periodic rinsing or replacement of filter media. If you use a UV clarifier, replace the UV bulb as recommended by the manufacturer to ensure it remains effective. Of course, plants may need to be trimmed, replanted, or moved from time to time, and occasional restocking of fish may be needed as well. But with proper planning to avoid the five mistakes we covered today, you can spend most of your future time enjoying your duck pond rather than maintaining it. What do you think? Did we miss anything you think is important for planning and building a duck pond? If so, let us know in the comments. Of course, you can always just say nice things too, but we'll take the criticism if we miss something. We'll also gladly accept the anti-criticism, that is, a click of the old like button. So if you found the video entertaining, informative, or hopefully a little bit of both, go ahead and smash that like button for us. Heck, you could even click that subscribe button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thanks for watching everyone, and until next time, keep on hobby farming.